Good morning everyone and welcome to this week's pros tip. Um, now during my professional career obviously I've given a, a lot of golf lessons and when I'm meeting someone for the first time and asking what they want to achieve at the lessons generally the answer you'll get back is I, I can hit some good shots but I want to be a bit more consistent. Consistency so obviously striking the ball is you know paramount for you know, consistency but it's also something else that contributes to consistency which is what I do off the ball. I often think of it um, if I was to play a round of golf in a tournament, I'd probably be on the golf course for, for four and a half hours. If I had a reasonable round, say round here, where the par is 70, and I went round in 70 shots, I pretty much think that round would consist of, say, 40 swings and 30 putts. So, my swing lasts one second and a half. So, for the mathematicians amongst you, that's one minute. So, I'm actually only swinging the golf club for one minute, yet I'm out on the golf course for four and a half hours. Therefore, I must think that the things I do off the ball have to be pretty important. So, I'm going to talk to you about a process with club selection today. Something we think we get right, but maybe we could be a little bit more efficient in our process in selecting a club. Now, obviously, we play with a lot of amateurs. I normally say, oh, I hit my 7-iron 150 yards, um, so that's what I'm going to hit here. Or maybe on a par 3 hole, I often say, oh, I always use a 6-iron on the 3rd, so that's what I'm going to use today. Whereas maybe your thought process should just be a little bit more in depth. So normally when we get to the ball, we, we're blessed with technology these days, with watches or, or zappers, in order to help us select our, our yardage and therefore the club that we use. Um, so most people, they would zap the distance, win, and then go. Whereas really, I think you're missing a trick there. And the most important thing the start of the process which should be how the ball's lying so I always want you to think that and make your assessment from that position so if you just look down at the ground there we see two different lies one sat down obviously there and one sat up perfectly nicely now obviously common sense would say they're going to react differently out of that particular lie so many different factors that you know to, if there's grass behind the ball it's going to come out softer Maybe if the grass is wetter, it's going to come out softer. If the grass is against you, it's going to come out softer. And then on the reverse side, I mean, if the grass is drier or the grass is with you, it's going to come out faster. So before you even think about the yardage, you've got to make an assessment of how that ball is going to react out of that line. So that's the first thing. Before you do the yardage or anything else. The next thing, after you've made that assessment, you would assess the distance. So you, you, you may use your measuring device or whatever it is, and you've, you've got 150 yards in this case. So lie, yardage, then we go into the to the win. In this case, it's slightly into off the right. So now I'm building a little bit of a picture. And then I suppose lastly, other things that contribute how far the ball will go will be like today, it's sort of quite a, an overcast morning, it's quite cold. So the ball's not going to go as far. Maybe if we're playing later in the year and we're blessed with some warmer weather, the ball's going to go further. So all those things are going to be strong contributing factors in how you select your club. So let's just go through that again. Assess the line first. That has to be a start point. Yardage, wind, air temperature and other factors like that. Then you get the club out of your bag. And don't get the club out of your bag until you know the one you're going to use. There's no point going back and keep changing. Make your decisions and then commit to that.